Without further ado, please welcome Chef Winston Williams. I'm a catering coach, caterer, personal chef, and a home cook instructor, oh, home cook instructor and a cooking, uh, cooking show host. I just said it, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Right. So every Tuesday on YouTube, a brand new episode is dropped. It could be in drop. Every single Tuesday. So you guys, please tune, tune on in, see what I'm all about. They asked me to come on up here to talk about being a chef, Mixing with cocktails and stuff. I'm not a mixologist, but I'm good at cocktails. So I'm going to talk to you guys about how I mix my food with cocktails and the inspiration that I get from that. Okay? As event planners, as caterers, imagine going to an event and you're walking in and a welcome you've been introduced with a popsicle. And the server is there with a spritz of Patron. Spritz that pineapple that, um, that, that popsicle and pass it to your guests as a welcome introduction drink, so to speak. Something different, something sweet, something interesting for me. People walk around and think, you know what? This party is about to get turned up, right? So once you have cocktails at any event, it lends a sense of elegance and sophistication, and you know it's going to be something really, really nice. At my catering company. We use cocktails in a lot of different things. Not only in, um, in, 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 at the bar, we, I've got a signature, cop, a signature dish that I sell a lot of this here. I'm ready for this. It's called a pan seared grouper with a coconut mojito sauce. <laughs> that is one of my, that, that is a signature dish and one of my go-to seafood dishes. And the reason people like that so much is because it can relate to the cocktail mojito but I turned it into a food item, and it works. It works really well. It's good. The mint, the, the mint, the, 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 the lime, the buttery sauce on this pan seared grouper melts in your mouth. It's a good old time in your mouth as well. A great, 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 great dish. Also, in my, um, we also sell a lot of stations when it comes to serving alcohol. We've got a rum bar station. We've got a martini station. Stuff of that nature, when people come on up and they have a rum bar, it's something different for them to say, hey, do you just have rum? I said, yes, but we can make whatever specialty cocktail for you. And with the brides and the grooms, when they have something where they want to create a special cocktail for their, for their uh, signature cocktail for their thing, I like to ask them, what's your favorite cocktail, groom? What's your favorite cocktail, bride? We will combine that and create something special for them. Tonight, I'm gonna to create two different cocktails for you guys. The Nace Now, which you guys are sipping on, and we're gonna do a key lime mojito. A key lime mojito. You see, I'm mixing the food situation with the cocktail once again, and we do that a lot. We've got this really cool uh, appetizer, a beef and veal meatball with tossed in a guava barbecue rum meatball. That's a big hit as well, okay? so. Without further ado, let's start with the nays now. Let me show you guys exactly how this was made. Now, sipping on this cocktail, as I'm, as I pass it around, they did a really good job with this. And what this consists of, if you take your shaker, you're gonna add some ice. Oh yeah. We're mixing it up. <laughs> we got to mix it, we got the ice, we've got gin, and we've got a very nice liqueur called elderberry um, flower. Yeah. Have you guys used this before? 
Yes. Yes? It's a very fragrant, it's sweet, and it's got this, it, it lends a different component to the alcohol, to the, to the liquor that is. We're gonna add our gin, our elderberry, a little bit of lime juice, Champagne flute, you guys can be making this at home too. But you gotta do it with finesse. Okay, you just can't be pouring it in there, okay? You gotta get yourself together, hold your glass, put it up right, act like you know what you're doing, right? And you just pour that bad boy in there. Woo, look at this. Okay? And then, behind that, we're gonna float it with some rose. That's what makes it white, I mean red. And this should have been open for me, right? <laughs> but we're gonna make it right. <laughs> this should have been fresh for me. I should have opened it before rather than walking around running my mouth off, right? But yeah, it's all good. This is what you call live cooking, baby. Live cooking. Ain't no fake stuff happening here, baby. Okay. Mm, turn, turn, turn. Open up for me. Open up. Here we go. And then. Mm, Ah, that pop pop sound we all love. Now check this out. We're gonna pour this in, finish it off, watch that turn pink, watch it fizz up, with a garnish of a twist of a lime. Lemon, that, oops. Twist of lemon, that is. Put that in there. And this is what you guys are enjoying right now. I had one, I'm gonna have a second. Love! Love. This is this is happening. This is happening. Oh my gosh. Yes. So cocktails, cocktails, cocktails. Now, food, cocktails, events. That's a great, great remedy. A great good reason to go out and have fun, of course. Now, um, another thing you can do with cocktails during the during the um pandemic. I was doing a lot of personal chef dinners because, of course, us caterers, we could not appease to hundreds of people or 50 people or whatever and had to keep it really nice and small and tight. So people would invite me over to the house. I would be cooking meals with two people, four people, up to 10 people. And I would create these beautiful menus introducing cocktail. I would have an intermezzo. Do we all know what an intermezzo is? Intermezzo, of course, interruption of dinner, cleansing your palate, getting ready for the next meal. We will introduce cocktails into the meal. We cook with the cocktail. We, 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 we have an a after drink with the cocktail, a dessert cocktail. And that's what this next one is, the key lime mojito. You can use this key lime mojito as a dessert, and it goes well with fish. And this particular cocktail right here goes well with seafood as well. A nice paella is very subtle and very mild, and it's it could be served as a cocktail for dessert as well. For this particular one, the second one we're gonna do, you guys did not, you guys are not gonna get to sample this, but the recipe is in the back so you guys can see how beautiful this cocktail is. I've got some simple syrup I'm gonna put on this plate. And the reason I'm putting that there because we wanna make it look pretty, we're making a key lime mojito. As we know, down here in South Florida, key lime pie is our go-to dessert. So why not make a mojito out of the dang thing, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna take this simple syrup, which is just sugar and water, and I'm gonna rim my glass. It looks pretty already. Yeah, man. So, let's do this. Any good mojito. The one thing about when I cook, I like to take ingredients that everybody knows and loves. As you can tell already, I like to take stuff that everybody knows and loves and elevate it. 
That's my signature of doing things and making my company special. So when a customer hears something that, hey, we know what that is, but we never had it that way. I've done my job. So the mojito, of course, we got some fresh lime. This is how a mojito is made. But well, my version of my style, at least. Fresh mint, put that in there. Mmm. Chop it up in there, tear it up in there, and we're gonna muddle it up in there. Lime, mint, simple syrup. We gotta make it taste good. A little bit of simple syrup. And what I got here is this particular stick, it's called a muddler. We're gonna take this and we're gonna grind this in here. What I'm doing, I'm just releasing the flavor from the mint. I'm releasing the juices, the oils, everything that we know mojito to know and love about. Ah, smelling good already, y'all. So with that being said, I'm gonna take some rum. Every good mojito requires rum. Right? Key lime, I got some beautiful key lime juice, fresh squeeze, compliments of the Hyatt Regency. Thank you, my dear. Okay. We're gonna add some ice. Hold that up, we're gonna shake this up as well. What we're gonna do, we're gonna shake this up until around get nice and frothy and foamy. Oh yes. Now, some people strain this. We go on raw style on this here. Pour this bad boy in here. Ooh, yes. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna take some soda water and float on top. Okay? And of course, we gotta make it look sexy. And that's where the mint comes in. Doesn't this look like tropical South Florida, Floribian style? Yes, yes, yes. You like? Ooh, I got a taste. I'm so sorry for you guys, though. <laughs> Yo, this is a good cocktail. Check this out. The recipes are in y'all's bags. When you all make this, please go on to my channel. Comment, let me know how good it is. It is gonna be good. So chef, this is busting. That's the word I want you to say, busting. <laughs> okay? So that's what this is about. So, this is, a, this is a lot of fun for me. I like standing and presenting, I love teaching. Every week I'm teaching people how to cook. I educate, my, my favorite client is an educated client. Because the client don't know what they don't know, so I like to train them. Every client that comes my way, my brides, whoever it is, I train them on how things should look, how things, a lot of them come to me thinking, hey, we know exactly what we want, and listen to what they have to say, but hey, we can do it this way. And we always try to elevate it and give them a sense of, element of surprise at the events. And cocktail is always one of those good twists for it. So, um, if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer some questions. No question. I have a question. Yes, please, talk to me while I sip on my mojito. Ah, yeah, I love your mojito. What is your favorite fish to cook? My favorite fish. Check this out. I'm from the Virgin Islands. We've got a thing in the Virgin Islands called potfish. I'm going to explain to you what that is. It's not a particular type of fish. It's a variety of fish. The potfish means it's, it's a cage. It's a contraption that the fishermen build back in the islands. They make it out of chicken wire and a frame thing. I don't know how to make it, but I've seen it used before. They make this particular trap out of chicken wire, and there's only one way for the fish to get in. They put bait inside, only one way for the fish to get in. So once the fish get in, they can't get back out. So once they pull that up, they got a multitude of Caribbean type fish. Parrotfish, we got a fish called Old White. We got a fish called Hind. We got a fish called, um, 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 even Hoopers we find in there, okay? So my favorite fish, is hard to say, because I'm a fish guy, so I would say anything in these soft waters is my jam. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. 
Yes, my dear, talk to me. I mean, I'm sure, like, speaking about the fish, it, there's so many different cultures. Do you find that certain cultures uh, are attracted to certain type of foods or certain fish? Let's say, like, you're, you're doing weddings, and I'm sure all the properties you've worked at, they've been from different parts of the country, different parts of the world, different cultures. Is it pretty universal what people will like? That's the thing. When clients come to me, right, they're not just hiring me as a caterer. They're coming for education and experience. Most of all, the experience. Because if you go to my website, you go to anything like social media or anything like that, you're going to see Chef Winston, Floribian cuisine with a, I'm sorry, classical cuisine. Uh, classical cuisine with a Floribian twist. So preparing a fish that you may have in New England or from California or whatever, I talk them into Floribian style. Hey, we you have any event? We're going to make sure you're going to walk away. We're going to leave, we're going to make sure, leave evidence that we were there. So that's what we purpose ourselves on. We make sure that experience is delivered through when you come to our events. Yes, yes. Yes, boss, talk to me. A pleasure to talk to you, by the way. I love your passion and enthusiasm, DJ AJ Falcon here. And hey, everybody, I'm just a guest checking this out. Very great vibe. My man. So yeah, I love your passion and enthusiasm. How would you compare the approach to bartending to cooking, how would they be similar or different? Bartending is a skill. Bartending, I respect. I never call myself a bartender. How do I look at the approach to that, you said? I would look at bartenders as somebody, as an artist, who can create these cocktails. And by me looking at them, I can create food by saying, hey, what can I do with that particular cocktail and put it into a savory episode? So that's how I look at it. So I would, like I said, classical cuisine with a Floribian twist. You give me anything that you know and love, I will give it my spin and you would love it. Straight up. <laughs> but you know, from how does it go, like the ingredients, like mixing ingredients as a chef to the way you mix ingredients as a bartender? Keeping it true to the particular cocktail, it wouldn't be a really difference. The only difference would be I'm creating more of a saving episode for that. For example, my pan said look over the coconut mojito sauce. I just made a mojito for you. Mint is in, my, is in that dish. Rum is in that dish. Coconut rum, that is, is in that dish, OK? And what I did to elevate it, I added a little bit of cream, reducing some cream. And the rum, of course, is cooked in there with some white wine. And I finish it with coconut milk and chopped mint and finish all that with butter. Wow. All right. The lesson was the chef's kiss. Everybody do that. <laughs> the chef's kiss. <laughs> My man. Thank you. Yes. Chef Winston Williams.